Hi, sweetie. How are you? So, sweetie, as you know, I've been smoking weed. Sweetie, I want to explain what's going on. Okay, I'm rolling a joint here. This is, this is like 80% tobacco and a pinch of weed. Okay. My room, as you can see, is a total goddamn mess. Dew, 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 dew. Yo, I've got my shrine over there for you, sweetie. Like, as you know, I got this thing in the corner. There's that. Oh, my Lord. I've showed this thing to you. I've got so many things for you. Dew, 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 dew. I don't have space for them. I got other things for you. Like, and here's the thing, sweetie. I know as well. Dew, dew. I gotta go outside. I gotta go outside. We have to go outside because there's art on the floor. Like I do the same thing whenever I get manic, right? Which is that I make a lot of art. This says Ali. This is Imam Ali's name, right? That's Imam Hussein's name. Anyway, and then I got the pictures, as you know. Like the funny, here's the thing. I wanted to say this, like law of attraction, right? Here's what happens. And it happened with me, too. I'm an artist. I pay attention to these things. These pictures I put up a month ago, they're pictures of, this is, like, these are poor people, Muslims. So this is a poor lady, and these are poor kids, and this is poor lady with babies, and this is a poor guy, and he's got a kid, and they're, you know, this is a, this picture makes me really sad. This one right here, this guy over here, like, I'm going to start crying. Just, now look at this guy over here. So this guy, and he's got a kid with him, right? He's got that kid with him, right? And you see on their faces, sweetie, look at the determination. It makes me, this makes me very sad because, sweetie, these guys, they didn't have any chances, right? And they didn't have any chances. They walk like this. They just want to be inside. They don't want to have to. They don't want to. It's very hard, see, sweetie. What, what people forget is that when you're living on the street, right? So I'm a street person. That's why I don't give a fuck about anything. I really don't care. And here's the thing. Like, society doesn't care about these people. And I was crying a lot today, missing you. And I've been crying the last couple of days. This is because of Muharram. Right, so we go to majlises every day and then we cry about Imam Hussein and we cry for 70 days about Imam Hussein because crying is everything, laughing is nothing. I don't know what to tell you. Crying is everything, laughing is nothing. Laughing is, laughing is for people who laugh, okay? Crying is for people who... Okay, so Prophet Muhammad said, if you knew what I knew, you would laugh less and you would cry more. Okay? So then, then they have another saying which is like this. <laughs> laugh a lot. L rather, laugh a little than cry a lot. <laughs> so, Prophet Muhammad said, I'm... This is what he said. I don't get it either. I think about these things. That's the whole point. They're very interesting sayings. He says, I wonder about a person that laughs, like, ha, 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 out loud, like guffaws, like this spontaneous thing, like, ha, 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 ha. Prophet Muhammad said, like, so, Prophet Muhammad said, I wonder about the person who laughs like that when they know they're going to die. Like, this is the guy who, when he's eating food, he used to say this. He used to say that when I'm picking the food up to put in my mouth, I feel like, I, I, I wonder if I'm going to be alive by the time the food reaches my mouth. So, en general, mi esposa, the rule is you treat today like your last day. This is the rule. Imam Sadiq said it. Don Juan said something like this. The Quran says something like this. Imam Sadiq, peace be upon him, said that you should live as if this life is one day, this kind of thing. Like, And in fact, Prophet Muhammad and the other Imams have said things like, live in this world like you're going to live here forever. Like, focus on this world. Like, 
sweetie so like i got a bunch of shit to do like the reason my room's a mess is because everybody it's the same thing the landlord wants my time and attention okay i got isha gupta at home stars like i don't know what happened like i got all these phone numbers i've got all these computers like i've got my chromebook rather but i've got like different phones like i've got this phone i've got an iphone that got smashed and it's in the shop this is an Android S20, right? This is a new phone. It's a great phone. So, sweetie, like, I literally just got up right now. It's midnight. And instead of, like, I was out all day. What was I doing? I don't know how to explain to you. This is part of what I wanted to do. Like, sweetie, from one perspective, the last couple of months, somebody might say I wasted my time, okay? I am not a slacker. I mean, I'm a slacker, I suppose. Like, I don't know. Like, I had goals, sweetie. Okay? I, these, I just told Abu. Like, I don't know what God wants me to do with my life. Okay? So, the rule there is something like this. Don't do what you want to do in life. Right? Try and find out what life wants from you. Try and find out what God wants from you. This is my thing. Like... I read this and I know this from different books. Like there's a book about the Nazis in Germany. Okay, there's a guy called v Victor Frankl. I don't know what to tell you and what not to tell you because I know you're not like like you read, uh, rather you'd like to read, but I know you don't have time for reading and all this kind of stuff, sweetie. Victor Frankl. Okay, I mean, if I have my Chromebook, I do, I do. So I can show you this goddamn guy, sweetie. Chromebook is so cool. I just go sit somewhere and people are looking at me like, oh, what a scum dog. And then I go like this. Pew! In one second, I open this thing and, and then it's on. And people are like, Aah! all right, so don't let that. Uh... Okay, so here's what's going on. Like, I got all these emails. I got all these people. I got all this kind of stuff. It's like, yo, I'm, try I'm a consultant. I only have one goddamn thing on my mind. Okay, which is making some fucking money. Okay, making some fucking money, right? So I, I'll tell you how bad I'll tell you how bad this gets. Like I wrote you this poem the other day, and I see that you replied. Okay, I see that you replied, right? Now I can't even find this goddamn thing. Okay, so I'm trying to find like, like I'm scrolling down here, because I emailed like 300 people, right? Anyway, I can't find your goddamn response in there, like, like whatever. So, sweetie, now I'm the guy who took a screenshot of this thing. Literally, I took a screenshot of this thing and I, and I went on Twitter because I was on Twitter and Google, I was talking to these guys. Like they got back to me and it's the usual shit. They'll get back to you one time like it matters and then they fuck off. Right, I've been locked out of my main Zidi Boy Google account, sweetie. I tell people if you like this stuff that I'm saying on this fucking channel, as far as sorry for swearing, like this, this is a new channel. I'm very excited. Like, listen, as a marketer, it's been an incredibly successful last couple of months. This is this is what I want to explain to you is that, however, in terms of my life, my life has been at a fucking standstill. Right, so. So I gotta go outside because the landlord just texted me and it's like, I just woke up, I haven't eaten, I just bought, I just took a quick, I mean, I, it's midnight right now and I'm rambling and my roommates, they just need one other excuse to call the police or some bullshit. It's the usual crap, right? Right, so everybody, like, everybody, guys, does the following, okay? Everybody who meets you, they gotta put you in a box, they gotta. And you have to do the same to the others. You have to. like, And you will see that if you meet someone like a street person, like me, we, we, we shift outside of these boxes. Like we can almost feel the other person trying to put you in a box and your, your spirit doesn't like that. And it's trying to like, it's very hard. It's very hard because if you let people put you in a box, then you become like them. And if you do not let people put you in a fucking box, 
they will fight you eventually. And this reminds me of this amazing genius, Chris Nolan, right? The Batman movies, the fucking Batman movies. Yo, I, I study like movies, right? And it's like, I, uh, watch like all kind like if i'm interested in something i'll go down the rabbit hole like my client steve does the same thing client slash best friend slash mentor slash fucking enemy slash he doesn't give a shit about me frankly frankly that's the way it is right now but anyway like i say like i whatever like i i tell him he owes me money like i got a client i forget the bit link i changed the bit link to his book where i'm writing a book with this guy in vancouver and he's from Edmonton, and we've been through a lot of shit together. Like, from my perspective, at least. Like, from his perspective, I'm just some piece of shit. Like, he tells some guy one time, I'm on, I'm, I'm called this guy, Steve. And, like, he's a baller. He's, like, on the phone and on his computer and talking to people day and night, day and night, day and night. So, he's, like, and he would train me like this. Like, I called this guy, and he would put me on speaker or mute and he'd be doing his shit, and I'm listening in, and it's like, fuck, he's talking to his virtual assistants, he's talking to his sales team, he's talking to the guy who's doing his website and Google ads, like Steve Scott was running a $50,000 a month Facebook ad agency when I met him, right, so if I emailed this to you, you might see this email address, stevescottpodcast at gmail.com, so my friend Steve Scott like my ex-client, he did drugs for like fucking, like when I say he did drugs, like I wrote his book, it's an amazing book, like it's cha it's changed my life, this, like, I came here, t I got it right here, I'll show you right here, like I mean, like I'm talking sweetie right now to the viewer and to you, to, to you, right, so this is a Chromebook, like the, I keep telling people, get that Chromebook, you like what I'm doing? You like this and that. You want to live a laptop lifestyle, this kind of bullshit. Like the Chromebook, like I... Listen, I will plug this thing in overnight. That's it. Like it's like a... It's meant to be treated like a phone. It is like a phone. This is an... This is a mobile operating system. Google Chrome operating system. It's a digital operating system. Chrome OS. Okay, it's called Chrome OS operating system. It doesn't have Windows. The reason it opens like this and goes instant on, it doesn't have software and Windows and downloads and uploads. and Well, it has downloads, but it doesn't have it. It's hard to explain to the average person because Microsoft has your fucking mind share. Like, people think you need Windows and, and Microsoft in order to, like, a computer comes with Windows. This is Bill Gates' genius, his business genius. Everyone accepts he's a fucking genius, and by the way, he's a nice fucking guy, and by the way, by the way, Microsoft has created more millionaires than anyone else except Amway. That's called a good billionaire, when he enriches those around him. A good, powerful person like in Amway, they create more leaders around them. A guy like Saddam Hussein or Stalin, okay, they kill everyone around them. And they, they, they suck all the money and life and blood out of those around them. So keep that in mind. All right, I'm going to go out and smoke this. I'm just saying, like, get a Chromebook. Like, I got Steve's book right here. So on the Chromebook at the bottom, you can see it's just got Google shit. Like, literally, it's just got, like, so that's the video player. Like, that's an earlier video from somewhere. <laughs> So this is funny shit to me. Like, this has nothing to do with my life. I'm in a Sherborne station, and I'm shot. Like, people think I'm insane. This is the problem. Like, my landlord... See, what what it is, is when people try and put you in this box, what they... Don Juan talks about this to Carlos Castaneda. People get pissed off with warriors because peop, because warriors do things for different reasons than people. People are all trying to impress other, either, people are trying to do two things, it seems to me. Follow the rules and impress others. And you follow the rules, because if you don't, then others will start fighting you and then all this bullshit. Like, I literally get into fights. I go to the Sikh temple, in the beginning they love me, and they're like this and that, and people are coming up to me. 
And then later on, they literally are fighting me. And if you ask me why did these guys fight you and chase you out of their sick temple? Well, I was went downstairs and some guy just got... Like, people get in my fucking face. This is what happens. Okay, so here's what happens again. Like, a person's going to meet you. They try to stereotype you or put you in a box or analyze you or whatever. Your brain does this. We... They... They have a term for it, like many terms for many things, and like it depends who you talk to and what you read, of course. Like me, my wife and I, Judith and I, we, uh, okay, yeah, Steve's book is right here, right? So, like I got Javier's book here, I got Steve's book here, so I'm not interested in, like I want to make money to pay my bills. Like my landlord's asked me to leave, and I have to come up with money for the next, this is what's really stressing me out. Like, I have this, today is like the ninth. It was Bakker's birthday today, right? And so, you know, I got a, uh, I got to write Bakker a birthday note, eh? September 10th, shit, I missed. I forgot. Like, I came back, I, like, listen, sweetie, I got proposals I'm working on for clients, okay? Like, this is with my cousin in Pakistan, so, like, okay. And then it's like, uh, like different stuff. I've got other proposals. I got this guy in Russia. I don't even know who the fuck he is. Like I sent out all these messages. And some peop people get back to me. This is what you forget. Like I piss off Irini. I'll piss off other people. I piss off Mary Murphy. Right? And it's like. I tell people. If you don't like my fucking emails. Just ignore them. Like are you that stupid? Like to me it's a non-issue. I'm going to keep sending out emails. Because that's what I do. I'm going to keep sending out tweets. I'm going to keep sending out WhatsApp messages. I keep talking to random people. That's what I fucking do. I love it. I talk to every fucking person. I try and interact with everybody. Especially when I'm slightly manic or whatever. And I want to stop smoking weed. I've smoked the last of my fucking weed. Like, it's been a crazy adventure. Like, I've been doing all kinds of stuff. Here's Javier's book. Right, again. Crypto fucking billionaire. I fired this guy. He's not a billionaire. And I, I got this out of this guy. I started, this is what I did. So I met this guy on Twitter and I'm like, yo, let me write your book. He's like, sure, sure, sure. So I go away and I spend like two fucking weeks. It's the same thing. I spent two fucking weeks writing this fucking idiot's book. I'm swearing at this guy because he's an idiot. So I do all this work. This is how stupid people are. He thinks that because he's got money, he can treat me like a little shit. Like I wrote, like this is a lot of fucking work. For me, it's great. Because every book that I write, I'm refining my art. This is all I'm interested in. Like what Stephen Covey calls sharpening the saw. Okay? The uh, the seven effective... Like what is this bullshit? It's, I'm, I'm calling it bullshit. Everyone knows it. It is the shit. Like Stephen Covey, I used to live in Vancouver. He's got a shop on uh, Georgia Street, which is one of the main roads in Vancouver. And you'll see the Stephen Covey... Uh, seven habits of highly effective people shop i shouldn't say this shit like i shouldn't say that he's a great man i respect him greatly stephen covey the late and great he wrote best-selling books he had huge fucking clients in the corporate world like every fucking person it's like with tony robbins like when they asked business people who would you like to run your company like fucking 80 percent of these people back in the 80s 90s they say tony robbins they didn't even think about it like this is like Fortune fucking 1,000 CEOs and these kinds of people. Like 80% of these guys. Fortune 500 companies. That's how fucking... Like Tony Robbins back in the day when he was at his peak. Like right now... Guys, I'll tell you honestly. I think Tony Robbins has lost his shit. I, I gotta tell you. I gotta tell you. I think Anthony Robbins has lost his shit. I didn't want to say this. But like it's like... Okay, Imam Sadiq. Our 60 Imam. Peace be upon him. Okay, so Steve's book is over here too, right? Like, what, what I'm trying to show you, like, I, I mean, I'm trying to show you that I'm not just sitting around smoking weed and acting like an idiot. Okay, I have got, like, I'm stuck in the same crap that, you, that you're that you in always, sweetie. Like, your goddamn place, like, I don't think it's a mess. But, like, it's like you're all, always organizing. And then, like, many times I've seen you over the years since you moved to this place downtown. 2015, 2016, whatever. Like, sweetie, I'm very careful. I don't put your address on here. I try not to show your buildings. I know you're very worried about privacy. 
Anyway, I'm going to go outside. I got to clean, like, whatever. I'll take you. I don't give a shit. Like, so I got different things here, like this thing. So Steve's book now, I put a picture of Frederick Nietzsche on there. And Steve is, like, fucking around. He, he's like, yo, I wrote, like, I wrote a lot. Like, I've written a hundred fucking pages for this guy. And now he says, fuck you, and he's fucked off. I think that he made, like, this is what they do. Like, mentors. Mentors don't do what you want them to do. Mentors do what you need in order. This is what Steve does. Mentor, a mentor, I because of my friend and client and mentor, Steve Scott. Guys, I come around to saying that a mentor, part of a mentor's job is to destroy your self-importance. Okay? What is self-importance? You know exactly what it is. It's your ego. It's this thing you call I slash me. I slash me is, a, it's a huge discussion, of course, and it wasn't the point of this video, but the thing that you call I, that thing doesn't really exist. This has taken me like 30 years to figure out, like 20, 30, and I'm still not quite there. Like, it's something like this. Like, the thing you call I, what is that thing? It's thoughts. The thing you call I, I am Hussein, my name, it's all words and labels. I'm Hussein. I come from Pakistan. My wife is una Colombiana, Princesa, Linda. Todo la uh, mundial sabe que los colombianos y colombianos, no colombianos, pero colombianos es los, las muy uh, lindas mujeres en todo la mundial. Esta es la real, uh, real, realmente. <laughs> Everyone knows that Colombians are the most fucking, yo. So, like, they, I, like, I'm a good guy. I'm not a bad guy. I'm trying to get organized. I even got, like, a goddamn... This thing is total shit, by the way. I tried using it, and it's like, guys, like, use what works for you. How about this? Like, I've been saying for you years, do what works, do what works, use what works, do what works, hang around with people around whom good things happen, right? Like... I don't know what the fuck to say. I'm leaving. I gotta go. Like, I'm always, I always say to people, I'm leaving. I gotta go. Like, I just consider myself a traveler through this fucking world. Like, I'm no big deal. I'm shit, actually. Like, I'm nothing. People look at me and they think I think I'm, I'm something. I'll tell you what it is. The more closer to God you get, the, the worse you feel about yourself. The more spiritual you get, the worse you feel about yourself. I was trying to, like, I met another guy, and I don't even know, like, and we were talking, and it's like, I says to him, this thing that I, this is like 10, 20, 30 years kind of bullshit. When I say 30, I'm 47. 30 years ago, I was 17, and yes, I was writing and doing all these things since then, and I don't give a shit about, like, and then and in the meantime, I've had a Fortune 500 career. I've traveled the world, more or less, apart from the Far East and Africa, Okay, this kind of thing. Well, I was born in Africa. I was born in Kaduna, Nigeria, but I haven't traveled Africa. And I suppose I'd like to. I haven't traveled the Far East, and I suppose I'd like to. Otherwise, like, I've traveled everywhere. Otherwise, I've worked for the best companies in the world. I've, I gotta say, I mean, I'm a Shia Muslim. We have temporary marriage. I've dated, and I'm in touch with, like, some of the most beautiful women in the world, as far as I'm concerned. And all the women I've dated... Some of them don't want to talk to me. Most of them, in fact, if not all of them. Like, I've got like three or four women like that go back like 10, 20, fucking 30 years, this kind of thing. Right? I mean, like, you know who you are. And if you're watching this, like, the way I see it is it's two things. It's like your customer and then the women. So if a customer, for a customer, like, if I call someone, like, these guys get, like, some of them get hundreds of calls a week. Some of them get like a hundred calls a day, like their secretary or their EA administrative assistant. They don't have time for shit. Like, and so you somehow navigate your way through all this crap. Thousands of people are calling me this company and the, like the executive assistant is getting hundreds of calls and there's ways around all this. Like if you, your job is again, it's like with digital marketing, it's like you get I mean, you get one shot once you have the guy's attention and you're pitching him. Like, once the sales process starts, this is something else. But the guy's going to give you his eyeballs one time and his attention. 
Like you call this EA again and again. Well, I emailed the guy. Did he look at the email? And the, and you try and strike up a rapport with her. I mean, like you don't say things like, did he look up the email? Don't be desperate in sales. Okay, there's always another customer. There's always another conversation. There's always another company. There's always another deal. Always. This is why sales is great. Because if you know how to talk to people, then like, and everybody does. Like I, I should... I should just say, like, now that I'm talking about sales, that the main objection that people have to sales, okay, I think everyone should, everyone is in sales, and everyone on the street, like, it's like this, like, everyone who doesn't have a job, get into sales, right? If you don't have a job, you have a, a, a credit card, right? And you have a phone. So what you do in Toronto, in Toronto over here, you get a fucking Moby bike, okay, and... You uh, get Fudora, do DoorDash, or Uber. Not not Uber or Skip. Yo, I worked as a digital marketer with restaurants during the pandemic, and I 10x. This is what I tell people. Like when I met I met Steve at right at the beginning, like literally when the pandemic started, 2019, like December. Like I like I'm jogging and like I have a guy he's doing like helping me with Facebook ads for realtors like he's a Facebook ads and Google and YouTube ad expert in Orange County Brian Christopher. So two years ago I was doing a lot of work with realtors all over the states mostly couple in Canada running Facebook ads for these guys. And then the pandemic happened and we shifted our focus. When I say we, I talk like an agency owner. Like that's what they call it, like a digital marketing agency, right? So like I just call myself a digital marketer slash internet marketer slash consultant. But like part of this stuff online is like you can make money. Like I make money with like I've made money with all kinds of stuff. I don't even know what the fuck is out there anymore. Like I've got webs and blogs and websites and YouTube channels and all kinds of stuff and Google pays you on the 24th of the month and then there's other stuff like I've got yeah you know, I've, I've got Kijiji and Craigslist ads out there because I try different things different ways of making money I've made money in every way online that I've experimented with except email marketing which I haven't tried right I mean Aweber or Mailchimp and stuff like this and creating an email list and then it's a dollar if you create an email list, it's very, it's not very hard in theory, but you got to keep at it. Like you run an ad, a Facebook ad to people who are interested in your niche. Let's say you're interested in fucking like felt tip pens. Okay. So you have like all kinds of felt tip pens and you want to sell them or something like this. Like here's, here's a problem with like, so in sales, I was going to say like the biggest problem with, with with sales from my perspective is that people feel like you need to talk in order to sell or you need to change your personality or something like this and this is total shit do you have friends okay you can sell do you talk to people okay you can sell do you want to talk to people okay you can sell i was a quiet baby now i'm diagnosed bipolar i've got huge issues but i did learn how to speak i did not know how to speak Okay, and I learned this by picking up the fucking phone thousands, countless thousands of times. There's no way around that. Guys, you want to become a people person and you don't want to talk to people? Like I told this, like the, I have my favorite asshole in the world is right like around the corner. It's right next to my favorite McDonald's in the world. And down the road is my favorite fucking park in the world. Millican Park. Then there's the McDonald's at Markham and goddamn Steel's. And in that plaza, I got, like, there's a weed shop. I don't even know the name of the weed shop, frankly. I got a couple of these people. Like, they love me, right? And they give me free shit. And I love these guys, right? And it's like 80 to 90% of the businesses that I go to, I end up getting in trouble there. And, like, I tell, I told this person the other day, I don't even go anywhere anymore unless I know the person. I'll go in there and people are just looking at you and this and I'll literally get into fights because some guy will, they'll, they'll just act stupid. I'm a street guy. I don't give a fuck. Like, and if I'm slightly baked or manic or something and just in general, what happens is, okay, 
People try and put you in a box and they also try and exert their authority over you. Everyone does it. And I've written another book about this, like learning love. I've written a whole book. It's like almost 100 pages. I got it. Like I have <coughs> three books that I want to put on Kindle. Four. <coughs> Last couple of years, year or two. I've been like, I'm the guy who puts my life on hold in order to do shit that I'm interested in or to help people, stuff like this. Like my dream, right? I, I've got on my computer like three or four books, like 100 page books. That's just my goal, like to write my, my dream life. I just don't have time to do it. I literally don't. Have, I've done like many Kindle courses. I know the ins and outs of this thing in theory. I, I'm having trouble. I, I'll be honest with you. Like the there's a couple of p times that your the Chromebook will will miss, right? I I used to use Microsoft Paint a lot to to, I'll I'll just tell you alter documents among other things and all kinds of stuff. I love like Microsoft Paint is my Adobe fucking Photoshop, and it's totally ghetto. It looks like shit, and I love it. Like my thumbnails on these YouTube videos, some of them I use Canva.com. But sometimes I'm just, I'm too impatient. I've got like 20 tabs or 15 open on my Chromebook. And so I will, anyway, like I'll just like, whatever, like I'll just do what I need to do basically. So now people try and exert their authority over you and they try and make you feel small and they'll do different fucking things is the problem. They'll come and they'll stand next to you and they'll start staring at you. And then this kind of bullshit. And after a while, you're like, can you just stop staring? And at that point with me, it's usually, it's like, I'm just like, at this, like if someone, someone, lots of people, they'll stare at you for fucking minutes at a time. And when you're saying, it's like the movie with Chris Nolan, like Inception, I was trying to say. This guy is a mad genius and he may be a fucking wizard. Okay, he says something like this in this movie. When the... Leonardo DiCaprio, right? The movie Inception, directed by Chris Nolan, who did the Batman movies. Okay, so now, when the person who's in a dream, when the people... Okay, so it's hard to explain and it's so easy. It's like, these guys in this movie, they go into people's dreams. Like Leonardo DiCaprio and these guys. Okay, so when you're inside someone's dream, you mustn't let the other people in the dream know that you're the one who's dreaming that dream. This is all mystical mumbo jumbo. It's like gurus of ancient India. It's like uh, Sufism in Islam with uh, Jalaluddin uh, Rumi, right? And Shamsuddin Tabrizi. It's like Christian mysticism with St. John of the Cross. It's like Kabbalah. The Jewish ancient practice of mysticism. These, it's all the same. Like again, um, you have two options. You can either try and organize your life. Like you will never organize your life and you will never do what you want. Like right now I've got four books, like three or four books, like hundred page books. I've got, by the way, I've got like two uh I've got a 400 page, 350 page book, literally. I've written all kinds of books and I like doing this. And it's like, I've long gone past the time, a point where people are like, oh, um, like they are so stupid to me. Like sometimes people, I say I'm a security guard, every single fucking person. And people don't believe what I, what I tell them. Cause they're like, this is what I understand. Cause they all lie. That's why nobody believes what I say. Like I, I'll show up and people are like, well, this guy, he's a fucking idiot. Like, I look ugly, I'm brown, and everyone knows they're ugly, and everyone thinks they're beautiful too, the same thing, right? Everyone knows they're, everyone thinks they're special, and everyone knows they're total shit, right? This kind of thing. It's so funny, like, it's like, you spend an, a, lo a lot of time, we spend a lot of time trying to prove to others that we're happy. This is the worst fucking mistake you can make in your life. Do you want to be happy or do you want others to think you're happy? Okay, so let's take this to the extreme. What if others thought you were sad? What if others thought you were insane? What if others thought you were total shit? Like you're a fucking idiot and your life's a mess. 
and you've got nothing to say for yourself. But what if that was going on, but inside you're happy? Anyway, I gotta go outside. I gotta pray. I just wanted to make a quick video for my sweetheart and tell her that I had three forklift jobs from three different staffing companies in three different parts of town that I hustled to get. I got the jobs. Like these guys said to me, we have a job for you. Some ladies like you can start on Monday. Some guys like, okay, just fill out this form. And it's like online, I'm trying to like fill out forms. I'm trying to email. And they said like, this, this is how God tests me. I'm used to this. Three forklift operator jobs and three clients. Steve Scott, he came and went. Pam Tyson, she came and went. Xavier Aponte, these are big deals. Pam Tyson is a huge realtor in California. Xavier Aponte, he's a cryptocurrency compliance expert, some fucking guy. He lives in Puerto Rico. He's traveling in Minnesota right now. He's a famous player in his field. And I, I'm the guy who was meant to write a book for him, his book, his story. And he was like, it's the same thing. Like he was so excited first couple of times. First meeting, we were so excited, both of us. That he's so busy, he doesn't return my calls and texts and emails. And I've written all this book for him. Like, I did a lot. No, but he's not. You're not going to find some fucking guy who for free is going to spend two fucking weeks and write your life story or some some stupid shit. Right? I mean, it's like. And then the guy doesn't ignore my text. He ignores my text because he's on a fucking plane or some bullshit. And I lost it. I'm waiting every day for this guy to read. I, I sent him a proposal and the book. I sent Pam a proposal and and and, and uh, like anyway, like Steve doesn't like contracts. I got other clients. I got two more lined up. I got my guy Canada. Okay, Canada Appliance Repair. Canada Appliance Repair. Ca is my client. I built that fucking website and I got it. Like that website is shit. In fact, and so I'm getting back together with this guy and I just need. One right, one good client. It used to be Steve, and now it's not. And then, then it was Pam, and then it's not. And then it's Xavier, and it's not. It's like, as a consultant, I've realized the optimal number of clients is one, and then you have two or three backup clients. Because you don't want to say to your client, well, listen, I don't have time for you. Okay, I am working with someone, or whatever. Like if, like, if I'm a consultant, like, I got one guy or girl, and it's like, I'm your man, sales and marketing. Online, offline. That's me. Like, like I know this stuff. I know it. You'll be like, why are you shit? How come your life is shit? That's still who I am. I'm the guy who's failed at everything like I teach. The things I teach are the things I've failed at. Sales and marketing, like, you're right. I'm not a millionaire. I'm a poor man. Anyway, I'm not sitting here, sweetie, wasting time and smoking weed and acting like an idiot. I'm in the best shape of my life. I'm having the most fun ever. I'm meeting the most people and I'm doing the most art. And it's like, yo, I'm just doing like they say in Canada, you do you. All right, sweetie. I don't know what the hell to say. Like, this was a long one again, 40 minutes. Like, the, I make these videos. I can't even, like, this is my thing. I, I like 40 minutes to me. It's not even one minute or a few seconds. It just, boom. You find, well, guys, when you find your thing, your thing is what? That activity where you lose yourself, like they say, like the Soulfly song, Max Cavalera, he's like, lose yourself, find yourself. Lose yourself, find yourself. This is a big fucking cool thing. Like two, three words, four words. Lose yourself, find yourself. You have to do this. Anyway, I gotta go. Okay, be nice to your mom. Okay, do the right thing. Be nice to people. Okay, call your mom every day, okay? Talk to your mom, all this kind of stuff, all right? Now, uh, finally, uh, I, I I had this tagline, like on my Zidey Boy, original Zidey Boy channel, Z-A-I-D-I-B-O-Y. You can Google me. I love comments. If you reach out to me, I'm going to ha try and help you. I don't want your money, all this kind of stuff. Anyway, so, and I'd love to hear what you find interesting. If you found anything interesting, this was a meant to be a brief video for my wife i've started uploading these online the reason i make all this contact emails and different things and upload them and share them with people is because i like doing that i don't give a fuck like i'm not looking for accolades or anything i to me what's interesting is to see how people respond 
like I'll send out all kinds of emails, do like art or whatever, and then I laugh my fucking face off <laughs> to see how people respond. This interests me. This interests me. I don't know what to say. All right, you may not like. This is the tagline I came up with for these videos. You may not believe in God, but do you believe in good? And then yesterday I said to some other kid at this weed shop of Tom's, Cannabis Express, Brimley and fucking Steels. I said to this guy, because I talked to them. I went there and I talked to this guy for like half an hour. He's such a nice guy. His name is Xander, Cannabis Ex Express, right? Yo, he gave me a free lighter as well. He gave me free stickers, his usual bullshit, right? Tom gives me free fucking weed and edibles and all kinds of stuff like Yo, this kid Tom at the weed shop, sweetie, he gave, I told you this, he gave me this container to put my weed in. Like, how am I not going to smoke weed when I meet some fucking guy and he gives me a weed container? Like, the other day I told you I met some girl, she gave me, not these ones, but she gave me some rolling paper. I don't know, I didn't ask her for rolling paper or nothing. I don't know this girl, I was making a YouTube video or something, and out of nowhere, she just comes up to me and she says, you want rolling papers? People give me food like when i'm doing i'm not people assume that i'm a street person and then like okay so that's fine then they assume that i'm poor or that i need their like i'm poor that's fine too in allah al-ghani wa antum al fuqara i recommend that you do what a lot of rich people do and you just say you're a poor guy i'm a poor guy i'm not a rich guy in allah al-ghani wa antum al fuqara allah is rich all of you are poor all right, I really do have to go. I don't even know what the hell I'm talking about as usual. And it's like, have fun with life. I don't know what the hell to tell you. Like, if you're watching this and you've watched 40 minutes of this guy in this in this goddamn... This is like my doghouse. Like, when my wife is pissed off at me, like, for the last few years, since 2015, something like this. Like, she's been living downtown. And I've had various places like this, like many. And I've had many situations with many landlords, many clients, uh, tenants. Landlord is like your boss and tenants are like your co-workers. Okay, every tenant is trying to get tight with the landlord. And then tenants are trying to get each other in trouble with the landlord, right? Like they, they try to look good in front of the landlord and they're trying to make the other guys look not that good. It's just like, like at work. You're, you're, you want to look good in front of your boss and you want other people not to look good because we're programmed to think this is this is the way and this is the path and this is how it's done. This is stupid. It's all that, that whole kind of thinking is shit. I'm leaving. See you later.